Yeah, I found an old picture of Drew before I, uh, before I met him. <laughs> a picture of Drew. <laughs> That's about how I look like about uh, 1971 or two. <laughs> good morning, everyone. How are you? I hope you're all very good. If not, let's get good, all right? And just, uh, you know, I was talking to uh, a lady next door, and um, she even had a healer tell her she had all kinds of problems and stuff. You know, and one of the problems, there's so much negativity out there, and people willing to tell you your problems. And this was a healer telling her she had cancer all through her and that she needed to fight infections and all kinds of crap, and it's like, oh, my God. You know, so be careful out there. It's a wild jungle out there. So be careful what people say and you let it inside. Don't let things inside. Be the controller of your own world, your own destiny. Don't let someone else control you. Find your joy. Get your happiness. Spend time alone where you can get to know yourself again and be comfortable with yourself and love yourself. It doesn't matter what the physical body looks like. It doesn't matter. It's who you are. The beauty of that allness and that love and that joy that, that needs to come from you. That's healing. Just, just align yourself with everything that's good and healing because that's positive. And even though the negative is part of duality and, you know, that's where we learn our most uh, uh, <laughs> uh, difficult lessons sometimes, uh, we still have to embrace that side as well and just under step back and let creation do its thing while we detach ourselves from it you know because if you play in the uh, playground uh, one can get stuck sometimes so I want to go over some of these uh, beautiful questions you guys are asking really good questions and here's a good question this is from Megan or is that to Megan oh no this is from Paul Smith and my name is oh no this is someone else <laughs> well, here's from Paul Smith and this one but anyway my name is Kim all right so I'm down to Kim she's from Australia and the Aussies, beautiful Australia, beautiful. I had a, a client move from uh, uh, Hawaii to Australia, and she wrote back with some pictures and said, everything over here bites and hurts. Big spiders, big as your hand. It's like, oh, but it, water's pretty. <laughs> big coral reef. Anyway, she said uh, she's in line with our teachings, of course, uh, but this is just truth. I mean, you know, not everything is perfect, uh, but it is everything is perfect. You have to look at that. Kind of hard to understand at this very chemical level. She, your question is, do you think it is possible to heal the body, uh, the physical, mental, and emotional through spiritual healing alone? Well, I'll say this. I have... Uh, spent more more of my life probably teaching and, and involved in spirituality probably than actual health and i'll say that at a certain level a lot of spiritual people believe this uh i have only seen one or two true what they might call miracles uh, I, I have not seen where spiritually you can take care of the physical body other than learning the laws. And I think this is true all the way with the astral or emotional, the mental worlds. You learn how, how, how it's set up and you learn the game. And that's what this is, is learning the rules of engagement, learning the rules of the game and, and how you protect yourself with that. No different than any other war zone. Uh, this, is, this is a battle down here and you've got to find a way to enjoy the battle and be happy doing it. And the problem is we get so involved in our own drama that it rips us here, rips us there. And one can claim, well, we're here getting knowledge and stuff, and I disagree with that. This is an already created universe. Remember the deja vu? You knew exactly you, what you were going to experience before you came here. You knew the body you were going to take on. You knew all of this. I knew. I know a lot of females that talk to the soul of the of the baby that they're giving birth to, and and finding out why this soul chose of them and what they're going to do. That's the kind of level we need to be at, where we're looking much more etherically. I believe that each level has its own set of laws and guidelines for the respective bodies on those on these realms, and the physical world just has physical laws, and man does nothing but break them all. So I think I think you really have to. I think getting in line with the laws of each plane is also getting in line spiritually, mm -hmm. because truth is a spiritual or spirituality, and and 
to get in line with those laws uh, will bring you into the best healing there is. And for an example, just the raw foods. There, there's nothing great about cooking food. If you have to augment the food that nature grows, then you, it's not good for you. Why eat it? If you have to put all kinds of spices on it to make it taste good, then obviously it isn't the food your body really wants. And that's why people polarize themselves to fruit because, oh, that tastes good. Especially those that are in Costa Rica, <laughs> Yaz in Thailand, you know. Uh, I had a guy in here from Spain, and uh, he did admit they had awful good oranges in Spain. So, yeah, I mean... Uh, Learning those laws and working with that. And I'll give you an example uh, of, of what you're engaged in now is detoxification, except I think the world has a dim view of detoxification, and I think we as a group are making a huge impact to what that really means because the trueness of detoxification is vitality, cellular regeneration. I mean, these are the goals and the focus of detoxification. And understanding the causative factors of why things happen in you lead you to the world of detoxification every time because most of the problems are a fluid problem remember it first it's a filtration a backing up of a systemic fluid this is why each one sees multiple symptoms when they have problems or when your cancer says oh your cancer is moving from now your lungs to your liver and oh look it's moving to your bones no it isn't it's the systemic problem. When you see a tumor in the right breast, let me tell you, your lymph system's backed up all on the right side of the body. Chances are a little bit on the left as well. So this is a fluid problem that becomes a cell problem. And we were just talking about this, about us, our end, that went to the Berinsky, and now she's doing uh, uh, mediated uh, glucose therapies and uh, targeted with chem light chemo and stuff like this. And all this then did IV therapy for, or, uh, ascorbic acid, which remember causes hardening of the arteries and other IV therapies. And the problem with this thinking is, is that it's off point. And that's what you see in natural healing and what you see in allopathy today. They're off point. The point is the human body is only a bunch of cells and two major fluids. And we have to get with, with spirituality. In other words, we have to understand why bacterium exists. We have to understand why microbes exist. Allopathy just uh, just focuses on the microbes and then, of course, the different theories, the theories, the theories. And again, here's a big theory that has led man down to hell, Bill. The theory of pathogens, of microbes, of bacterium. So now we're vaccinated out the butt. We, we are full of antibiotics, which destroys the bacteria in the body. You notice those who have had the most antibiotics have the most problems. They have the arthritis. They have the serious cancers. Why? Because you killed your bacteria in your body. Go back to that story on um, um, uh, Ripley's Believe It or Not, where the young man with the lymphoma went up to northern Alaska and this Eskimo elder put him on rotten food. Big time probiotics, not the little lactose bacillus and bifidus crap, the real proteolithics. And of course, that cleaned his sewer system out and then he had no lymphoma left. Hello! Right there should dispel that gender past your theories right there. But no, 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 we're clinging, and so we fill people full of antibiotics. We don't understand the terrain or the culturing medium. And this is, uh, many other docs have read, a, one doc wrote a book, on, I think, on the, the terrain. Uh, I mean, this is what you're about, you know. So spiritually, I think, encompasses all things, including proper diet, proper detox. All things should be do that, quieting the mind, controlling your desires. All these things are tools to work with respective bodies. Because physical body, physical world. Emotional body, emotional world. Mental body, mental world. And that's what science hasn't got to. Science, physical science is just that. Highly constipated and very mundane. Well, you're a researcher. You, you were working in stem cell and stuff like that, which I think is really cool. Mm -hmm. But you went away from that knowing. And the first comment I remember talking to you over the phone was, it's not going anywhere mm -hmm. progressive. Mm -hmm. And I like that thinking. Mm -hmm. And it's like then, then yesterday we had a, a person that did a stem cell and her problems got much worse. Mm -hmm. And that's the point is you can't go back. You're trying to change the consciousness of the cells. And what's interesting, you know, I mean, this whole thing, 
spiritually as something else. And it's very difficult for the average person to understand. But when you throw a pebble in the ocean, you notice the ripple or in a lake, the ripples go out into the lake and ongoing. Mm -hmm. So consciousness flows through all life. They say that you can mutate a, a bacterium here and that same mutation will be found in Europe within three days. So when you look at this and look at the consciousness uh, and the allness of things, you start to realize, holy crap, this stuff flows through everything. So each level has its respective flows of consciousness and each has its own body. Sometimes in physical science, we want to think that the brain is the mind. And that is not true. Your physical brain is not your mind. And neither is your heart, your emotions. Uh, that you've got bodies at these levels that you, can, that you can experience and travel into proof to yourself. And so those are called the OBEs we talk about, out-of-body experiences, your journeys through your other bodies, being aware of your other bodies that you're using simultaneously. There's so much fear about that stuff, and I think we have to drop all of that. So it's a good question, though, and I'll have to say that I believe you must follow the laws for each body on each plane. So, physically, you can't get out from detoxing your body and cleaning it out. You can wish those acids away. I are positive thinking. My mm -hmm. sister, very positive thinking. I know those acids are gone. Mm -hmm. Ow. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, I mean, we can play those games, but there's only a few people that are good at that. I don't know where Sai Baba at least can materialize astrally. Uh, there's some incredible old masters and beings that uh, Malarapa was one of my favorite ones, uh, where he could change his physical body into molecularly into anything he wanted. I mean, these are very advanced souls that do those sort of things, but look at the time they spent playing with doing that, and they could have been deeper into the heart of God. So anyway, good question there, Kim. Appreciate it very much. And thanks, you all from Australia, for watching us and taking after your health issues. I love you guys. Uh, let me see. This is from uh, T-O-N-D-E-R-A-I. Uh, and this is signed Rosemary. The appointment's calling in now. What appointment? That you had at 10. They had from 10 to noon. And then nah, I'm sorry. I'm doing videos. They missed their appointment. She's doing chemo and everything else, so... But, I know. I know. I mean, that's an RN that doesn't get it. Anyway, this is from Rosemary. I tried to... So I stood up for you guys. <laughs> yeah, I mean... I tried to get to the point and not bore you with too much detail, as I know you are very busy. I, however, have four... I have a four-page Word document. Oh, my God. Oh, wow, honey, this is a lot in here. I've, um, she's a uh, country of birth is uh, Zimbabwe. Uh, I have to look at this and then get back because there is a lot here to this. Uh, look at that document. Uh, quite a bit there, so I'm sorry, sweetheart. I'll, I'll look at that and look at that. Okay, so this is the Mines the do Dojo. <laughs> the Dojo. Oh, yeah. Dr. Morris, I think it is extremely fascinating that it is possible to get nerves to respond and function correctly when they were uh, not before. And I think you guys are about to see that. Uh, again, we've got the paraplegic that uh, mm -hmm. I got the word a couple days ago. He's on a bicycle now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's pretty good. Shows you how you can take complete spinal paralysis and rebuild the nervous system and, and get, get you up out of a chair. I mean, this guy is really focused and doing well. And everyone we've ever worked on that focuses and does well well, gets re great results at nerve regeneration. Mm -hmm. And nerve regeneration is a trip, brother. I'm telling you, and for those that like the vegetables, forget nerve regeneration because you're just not going to get it. Not, in, not, not, not at the level that this is. Uh, we've worked with this for so many years with people in chairs. When I see people in wheelchairs or have trouble moving limbs or, or walking normal, I often say to, to, to me, I guess myself, I wish those people could walk again and walk to move normally. In the back of my mind or in my subconscious, I know there's a way that they can and it, and it does not have to be in the next lifetime. Can you do more videos on that? Absolutely. And I tell you, on nerve regeneration, um, I'm, I'm hoping this young man will uh, definitely would like to do a YouTube with us mm -hmm. and show That'd where he was a paraplegic at one minute mm -hmm. and the next minute he's walking. And I mean, but 
I, I think he should be the poster child, although we've had several, but a, a, a poster child. And also with the MSs and all the neurological problems, MS right now is everywhere. Mm -hmm. You know, the cerebellum's going down, the adrenals are down. And, and so then you're getting brain lesions all over the place from the lymph being down. So these are the criteria for Lou Gehrig's MS, Parkinson's, things like this. And you just can rebuild all this stuff. And that's the beauty, guys. We can rebuild the body, whatever. But you can't rebuild the body with acids. That's allopathic thinking. Acid, get rid of acid thinking because it's just destroying tissue. Whether it's minute amounts of chemo with glucose. Holy crap. I mean, it's just, you know, it's just another thing. They don't get what the real issue is. And so really, once you get it, then you'll know whether a practitioner understands cancer or not, you know, in terms of causative factors. So absolutely, I love nerve regeneration. I'm the same with you. You know, there was a, uh, a quad in here one day who had uh, flown into Las Vegas with, with hundreds of quads and paraplegics to talk to Jerry Lewis because he was doing the MD uh, telethon. And he wouldn't even meet with him. And this guy was very upset, and I don't blame him, you know. And the problem is, though, he has to understand that this is just a money thing. Mm -hmm. These guys aren't getting regeneration in MD. They're not getting, we are. Those people, and you guys are, those people that are out there actually in regeneration thinking is getting the results. Mm -hmm. Not the people trying to treat and make something happen artificially. It just doesn't happen. You've got to go through the route of how life grows and enhances itself. So good, 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 good thing there. Dojo. Dojo. Been to a few. Director 92110. Hey, thanks, man. Appreciate it. John. This is John. I know some claim that you can make a mineral solution out of Himalayan salt, but I've been under the impression that unless minerals have gone through plants, we can't use them. I'd like to know what you think. John, I kind of agree with you. I think the more elemental uh, something is, uh, in other words, more toward the, uh, the mundane level of the calcium, uh, magnesium, and phosphorus, the more elemental it is, the less bioavailable, simply meaning the, be the, the less absorbable that that is. So then you start to see these companies using different forms of calcium, mm -hmm. claiming better absorbability and crap like this. Bottom line to this is, is when you look at chemistry and biochemistry and you got the biochemical salt and you realize that plants bring in the elements, converts them to salts, we start living higher up off the ground. Mm -hmm. And consciousness starts expanding a little more than having your consciousness stuck in the ground. So many people have their heads in the ground like ostriches, you know, and that's how they eat. You know, so we, you know, the getting up off the ground uh, is a good thing. You know, the primates like to be up off the ground. And I think there's a lot to be said about that because the Homo sapien is basically a primate at a certain level. I'm physiologically, okay, I mean, you know, I'm not trying to... But uh, I think you're right, John. I, uh, a matter of fact, when you go back to chelation and you go back to when they started wrapping amino acids around minerals, mm -hmm. why did they start that? And I remember going way back when they started that was to get better absorbability of the mineral. The problem is if nature doesn't want true absorbability of minerals, the elementals, why force that issue? Because then you have a free radical, in my opinion. Calcium can be much as a free radical as anything else in the body. And the proof of that is those that take calcium supplements without parathyroid activity. Mm -hmm. With low parathyroid gland, remember that's parathormone, without, without that... Without a good uh, dose of that uh, hormone, the utilization of calcium is very low. So that on top of, of all of that even uh, is something. That's why I like to mix the kelp with the parathyroid because you have the iodine and the parathyroid that get, interacts with the glands and then of course that parathyroid will also help with calcium. But we've seen, I had a lady come in here one day, I walked, she walked like she just got off her horse and been on that horse for two years. She was bow-legged like a banshee. And uh, I said, let me guess, a little arthritis, you been taking calcium, have you? She said, yeah, how'd you know? I said, you're, you're, you're a rock. She said, I am a rock. You know, it took me almost a year to get her unrocked because she was so rocked up. So you have to be careful with the, uh, with the elements. I don't care. A lot of people, I think what it is, is a lot of people are grabbing on things like volcanic ashes and stuff. Yes, they're rich in minerals, but that's how we grow our plants. Then those plants give us the gifts of the food. And that's how I see that. And we can chip at the, we can chip at the volcanic ash if you want. 
but I just don't consider that a natural thing and doesn't fit in the scheme of how a, a homo sapien would be. Let me get my chisel and hammer and chip off a piece of volcanic ash. I mean, come on. Mm -hmm. uh, I just think that really we need to get our heads higher up out of this type of elemental thinking. And you notice people come in here with bags of vitamins and minerals. Mm -hmm. No, they felt a little better, but they still have raging cancer and everything else because this is a flood problem. These are tissues, these are organs and glands that are problems. And so what are we doing with a few bits of uh, some chemist formula of vitamins and minerals and isolates, which has no charge left, very little charges, and of course rebonded maybe in ways it's not real happy. So uh, the more natural thinkers out there, the better we are. Superfood blends are the best thing that came out. When we realize you can't isolate chemistry, we'll make superfood blends. Yeah. So you start to see that move from... From when I first got into this, and I can imagine, I've had 43 years in this now, Dr. Jensen, 75, almost double. I mean, that guy had went through a hell to get to where he was. A lot of people slammed him for years and tore him apart, and yet he stood tall. Good guy. Thanks, John. Appreciate that. Uh, this is Adam. Hey, Adam. Uh, thanks, Adam. Appreciate that. I'm glad you like our videos. I, I'm trying, you know, to give all you all the information we can because we we need to, I think, uplift and uh, you know bring this into another level, mm -hmm. you know. And you you got the smarts like nobody's business. Um, is carob healthy as a replacement to make chocolate? You know, years ago I had health food stores, and I of course we were eating carob pods. And, and nothing any nastier than eat an old dried pod, carob pod, you know, but, you know, the thought was, you know, you eat everything in its natural state. Uh, I like carob, you know, I used to sell carob covered pineapples, carob covered uh, bananas, and carob covered papaya, and I think I would eat it all before I would even put it out on the shelves, mm. it was so good. I'd buy it by the 25 pounds or something. Oh, my God. Well, I mean, that got me off the track was my health food stores. <laughs> you know? Nothing wrong with raw milk, right? Raw mm -hmm. milk is raw. Raw milk <laughs> yogurt, it's raw. You know? <laughs> but that's the thinking. You know? So we've, we've grown a lot through the years, I think. You know? A little balance, uh, you know, in there. Because I'll tell you, if you don't, it'll pull you back in. As soon as you get out too far, you get your head cut off. And then uh, your butt kicked and back down you go. So yeah, I think so, Adam. I have red carob, uh, has aspartic acid in it. Is that good for me? Well, you know what? In nature, all these acids are buffer like uh, uh, we were just talking about um, ascorbic acid yeah. being part of the flavonoid complex. In that complex, it's an alkaline complex. And the buffered, great, great, you know, for, for, for cell wall, great for, for inflammation, everything you can think of. Mm -hmm. So these acids are okay in their proper context as buffered with their proper chemistries, absolutely. God put all these acids in there, and definitely acids at different pHs have, have beneficial responses. Look at estrogen. In a proper estrogenic flow, yes, you have a good response. You clean the uterus, and notice that when a woman's clean in the uterus, the pituitary knows enough not to have an overabundance of bleeding. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, it, it's, just, it's just amazing the consciousness mm -hmm. of this whole mm -hmm. thing mm -hmm. and how the brain or mind uh, uh, sees, anticipates, moves. And I, I just think it's beautiful. Yeah. I think we haven't begun to see the beauty of the human body yet. And now that we're, we're, we're pulling ourselves into the right track, and you guys are the leaders of the pack, uh, I think we're going to see what we can accomplish with our human bodies. And like Roman said a while back, you know, there's some beautiful looking people out there that eat crap. How come some of the health people look bad? And the thing, and I had, we had one, I think you were here, and the girl was, the lady was beautiful, mm -hmm. but underneath she was going, I, I can't, I'm horrible. Yeah. I can't. And that's the problem. When you start asking people or meeting people in a clinical setting, Setting, mm -hmm. and you start hearing them talking about, oh, look how beautiful I are, but I don't feel good, I got tumors, or I got this, you start to realize it, it, the outside is one thing, the inside's another. And I will say that those people that are into natural health are there because they were most of them were driven there by their problems. Mm -hmm. So they are going to be sicker because they were driven there with their problems. Mm -hmm. Very few people just wake up from a diet if they feel good. 
Very few times. That's where the negative side comes in here. Because if you're always positive, change is very difficult. It is once said that you could live in the cosmic consciousness state, that is, the pure mind, for eons of time. Mm -hmm. So the motivation comes when the negative side comes in and bites on your butt. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. That's motivation. And that's where the, the negative and positive are, are flipped to sides of the same coin. I have a problem with the whole coin because creation is creation. And sometimes people need rest from creation because mm -hmm. it is so demanding on souls. To take your yourself as this brilliant being that it, that it, that in its essence is all of the all and then putting you in a little physical body mm -hmm. it's a trip mm -hmm. it's a trip you have to really forget who you are don't you yeah it's a trip so i like that i read that this uh, chemical extraction process that makes aspartic acid bad it could be you know what all that could be and i just think when you you isolate and you try to achieve out of these things don't do it do the whole food. If that food isn't tasty and isn't good for you, psh, because it wasn't meant to eat. I've often said this about shells on nuts. Now, I was watching this hillbilly show, and they were trying to make money, and they were buying walnuts and selling them and stuff. Walnuts. All you've got to do is take one walnut by hand and try to take off the green shell and get down to the walnut break and just see what happens to your hands and everything. Mm -hmm. I guarantee you, you'll eat one, and you'll be cussing all the way doing it. I mean, we used to put our, we used to put them in a big hole, back my car over them, and let my tires try to strip them because it it it, it stains. Mm -hmm. It's bad. Yeah. So you know why did God do that? And it's to keep you from overeating things that can be potentially too acidic for you. I mean, nature has these things. Oh, this is a long one. Uh, Cheryl, hi, Cheryl Harris. Thank you for your time. You're welcome, sweetheart. I contacted your office and Drew sent me some uh, links and asked me to send you a message so you could address my health situation. You mentioned on your videos about your staff being nice and they are very nice and helpful. A little background. I'm in Oklahoma. Oklahoma is the place to be. And was raised on beef and western diet. Uh, I bet. Oklahoma. Well, Midwestern people were the same way. A lot of beef. A lot of bacon. Yeah, I've been to a few slaughterhouses. Hoo-wee. Over the past two years, I have moved from that diet to vegetarian. Then to vegetarianism, I have tried the green juice and agreed that it would help to build me up, but it is not helping to detox and alkalize my body as fast as I need. I need your help, please. Well, that's what I've been saying is that, yeah, this is powerful foods and stuff. Mm -hmm. But if you have a, a lymphatic problem, which most of us do, and you want to dig deep into that system, you got to get with the stringent rich fruits. Because I'll say this, bananas are not great detoxifiers either. But I love them, and they're, they're, they're considered the most healthiest food on the planet. Uh, uh, but 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 uh, as far as detoxifying, and that's a fruit, I'm really into the fruits with the astringents for detoxification, like your citruses, mm -hmm. like your oranges, your lemons. Look at look at the difference between a lemon juice fast and a grape fast. If you guys if haven't done this, try this. Try five days grape fast, and then try five days lemon juice fast. Some guy just tried five days mm -hmm. and had to break it on lemon juice because he couldn't go any further. Well, I think I did like 29, and we had a YouTuber do 43 or 45 days on lemon juice. Kicks my butt. 45 days on lemons. That's a butt kicker. You know, you don't think these foods are powerful until you fast on them. They'll be diluted lemon? Uh, I, I'm not sure how he did that. With, I'm sure a little dilution of the lemon juice with a little cayenne pepper and then maple syrup kind of way we do things in that way. You don't have to do anything with that. I personally don't like the cayenne pepper in it. I can drink lemon juice straight. Uh, when I have been diagnosed uh, with from my uh, PCP, uh, stroke, eight, stroke age 25, I am uh, 39 years old currently, uh, no uh, residential, a diverticulitis, so a stroke. Okay, so when we see a stroke, in a young person, that's serious to me, and we have a lot of those, and we're having a lot of the seizures. Remember, we were just talking about a couple seizure cases we have here. I'll say this, get on upper circulation and brain and nerve number one. 
Number two, check your parathyroid gland just in case your stroke came from vascular spasms. Check and see how your fingernails are. If you Even at 25, see if you have spider veins already at 25. See if you have a little depression at 25. These are all part of the parathyroid gland. See if your skin is saggy, not snappy. You know, all these things reflect acidosis and a lack of calcium utilization. Check for those things. Because if you've had a stroke, you're either occluded or you had a, a spasm or a, uh, you know, a vascular collapse. Again, the upper circulation keeps blood moving and oxygen moving aggressively into the brain. Brain and nerve will strengthen any cells that are damaged. At the same time, you want to honk on your lymph system. And this is what I've been saying. Even at 25 years old, these people are in serious trouble. Here's a 25-year-old person had a stroke. That's, that's ridiculous. But that's what we're into. And I just feel sorry for this person. I mean, this is them, diverticulitis. Well, guts are a mess. So colons, remember, we talk, talk about really clean up your GI tract. Very important there. Weight gain and stomach pain Last year, uh, I gradually weaned myself off of the six medications they had me on through my diet only. Good girl. You know, I mean, you got to get some scoliosis right there. It tells you parathyroid. I'll tell you right off. Parathyroid right there. Scoliosis, your spine is curving, and it can curve any direction toward the stronger side. So that's, that, whichever side you're curving to, that's your stronger side. Um, I got to get into the kidneys. You got to get your lymph draining, and I might add, work on those lymph, neural lymphatic points down your spine. That'll help keeping that spine from being pulled even further uh, out. But definitely parathyroid here in this case. We don't know whether it's a pituitary yet, but certainly we know a parathyroid. Uh, level six, seeing a close friend, Dr. Brian uh, Hughes at Hughes Chiropractic and Wellness in Ogman, uh, Oklahoma. Heart attack? Question mark. Uh, January, holy crap, January uh, this year, she went to the ER. The doc there said he stopped me from having a heart attack. Holy crap, my blood pressure was very high and stabilized with the diastolic number being 102 to 104. I was given a prescription for uh, nitroglycerin. Holy crap. Well, this, honey, honey, you, you, Cheryl, you got to uh, really stay on the fruits. And I would really get a lot of the grapes. Grapes are probably the most flavonoid rich foods out there besides the blackberries, you know, and the blueberries, those dark, very rich, flavonoid rich foods. They, they are great anti-inflammatories for the vascular wall. You got to get your endocrine glands up here. Can't tell yet whether you have a pituitary suppressing your parathyroid, big time parathyroid, but this is also a big time kidney and adrenal case. Really got to work with this because these people are born with, with uh, weakened nervous systems and and uh, with, with a parathyroid week like this and low calcium, prone to vascular spasms. It doesn't have to be occlusions in people. It can be a vascular collapse or a vascular spasm. And that can be a result of parathyroid here. And that's just what I'm, I'm seeing so far. Uh, now, as of February 13, I have a, a okay, she has a, a, a diagnosis of AFib. That's atrial fibrillation. Uh, again, that's a parathyroid gland, calcium utilization problems, and adrenals, central, the autonomic nervous system that feeds the heart. Yeah, honey, you've got to get these things up and going. That'll, that'll eventually move you out of AFib. I was put on a, a drug and started internal, oh, and started internal bleeding in two weeks. This drug made her have internal bleeding. I was drastically removed from the med. Jesus Christ, I bet it was an FDA-approved med, wasn't it? Oh, it has, causes bleeding in 10% of the cases. Holy crap. Yep. Uh, bad, bad, bad. Uh, I moved from the med real quick. I told by my cardiologist in the ER that they could not do anything more for me. Okay, well, they can't. They were right with that. But if you are still bleeding internally, get our bleeding formula, ASAP, and start taking it. It's a hemostatic. It'll stop you from bleeding internally. And what, that always should be in people's medicine cabinets. An antispasmodic, a hemostatic, you know, one, one stops convulsions and spasms, and the other one is a stops internal bleeding. Great for, uh, uh, and also lymphatics, especially with uh, your, your, your poke, your blood, your plantain. In case you get sn a snake bit or a spider bit, you want all your lymphatic herbs. Um, let me see here. My cardiologist uh, wanted to see me and advised me to start uh, Levinox. 
uh, injections abdominally, then move to Coumadin. Holy crap. Well, you know what? This, they're just trying to thin your blood out to hopefully you won't uh, have a stroke or a heart attack anymore. I know what they're doing, but by going on all fruit, you'll naturally clean the blood. Any clots will dissolve. And uh, this isn't about that. Uh, this is about your nervous system and your vascular walls and the integrity of that. And that you can see that with this. Uh, he was not satisfied that the Coumadin would work. Uh, I am uh, having vaginal bleeding when I take these types of medications. Holy crap. Well, I mean, this person sounds extremely acidic, that's for sure. Uh, and had blood clots the size of softballs. You know what? I would work on your pituitary. You know what? I definitely would. I, I, I think I would do this. I would do the female reproductive formula. I would definitely get the parathyroid glandular with kelp and do one three times a day, I would also do the kelp. Now, this is for health purposes, uh, and this is what I would do for myself. So I just want that to be known, I guess. So uh, I don't know how we can advise people, but this is in their health issues, not in the treatment of diseases. Thank you very much. Um, my numbers are not low enough for a blood transfusion, but they are very low. Get, get that hemostatic. Uh, it's called bleeding here. Get on that as quick as you can. Also, get the female reproductive formula. I'm giving you some tips on the parathyroid gland and kelp. Uh, since uh, you got to get on the bowel formulas and start cleaning up your diverticulums. I mean, really cleaning up that gut. So get you on a stomach and bowel formula. Get on the GI broom. Uh, you want to get on your lymphatic and kidney formulas, get on your adrenal gland formula here, and you're going to have to go in that direction to get yourself out of this. Uh, I have gained 60 pounds from the recommended high fiber diet. You know, the problem with that is the best fiber on the bowels is the fruit fiber. Vegetable fiber, second best, but any other fiber, not, not, not recommended. You know, whole grain was the big fiber. Well, she has adrenal glands here. Whole grain will just put nothing but weight on her, and then she'll have blood sugar problems because she has adrenal problems eating complex sugars. So, you know, it's just a, cat. It's just a bad thing when people don't understand what they're doing. I was a fitness instructor just five years ago. Well, sweetheart, let's get back to that. Let's get your body back in shape, and then you'll be a fitness instructor of a different kind. Instead of pep about proteins and things, you'll be on greens and superfoods. So you'll be a good fitness instructor. You just got to get your own uh, body back. Talk classes even, so this is all just a shock to me. Well, that's the thing. You know, that's why I like iridology. Because if, the more you get in tune with iridology, you have a tool. You have a tool right in front of you that says, oh my God, look, I've got this going on. I've got that going on. I can fix this. I can fix that. When I first got my eyes, I, had, I was at a show and some guy had made, built his own Irish Camry, had an engineer, and I, I actually bought one from him, had his engineer build me one. But uh, I looked at my eyes and I went, oh, no. And then I look at these strong constitution people and it's like, oh, my God, lucky, lucky, lucky. Now, somehow, possibly through the multiple injections that I have over the past two years, which included H. pylori bacteria in my stomach and intestines, my pH is completely off. Well, to get your pH, and it's a good question here about pHs, to get your body in a homeostasis, in some type of balance. And I can't say there's balance in nature because it, basically you're moving between two poles. Your consciousness, the, that which is you, rests right in that middle and you're watching these two poles. So that's why Buddha said the middle path. So it doesn't matter. I mean, that's where you're getting into consciousness-wise. But down here in creation, you've got the shift between these two poles. And the only way to get into balance is eat balance. Take, start consuming everything in balance. If you try to use chemistry, oh, I'm out of this, I'm deficient in this, I'm doing that, you'll get more out of balance. Been there, done that one. And that's the one you want to get rid of. Uh, minerals and all this. Start eating foods that will bring your body into balance and clean it out. And that's fruits, berries, melons, and salads. Even that will help to bring into some balance. Green drinks. Let your body bring itself into balance with, with chemistry that is total, that is complete. And then your body will get itself into balance. It'll kick out what it's not. It'll repair itself and all of that. Using the herbs is just using your smarts to know which tissue that you know you have a problem with. Now, God gave you the tool of the eye to take a look at to show you what you need to work on, and then you've got the herbs as the, as the, as the goodies to help you, and then the diet is a given. Diet is a given. Mm -hmm. You know, in today's world, 
If you can do, you know, 80% raw, good. Good, good, good. You've done well. But in fixing something, try to get to that 100% raw. And, try, and when you're trying to fix something, it makes a huge difference. Uh, so there. Also, I use since I use uh, sensitive products on my skin. Uh, I'd say don't use anything on your skin, honey. Forget that. Get the skin opened up. Start sweating. Because if your parathyroid's down, what is another gland that's probably down with it? The thyroid. So then she can't sweat, and then subcutaneously she backs up. Remember the young guy yesterday had tumors subcutaneously. That's hooked right into the lymph node system, and you see that in the eyes. You notice the lymph nodes are right at the subcutaneous levels of the skin in the eye. Oh, this is so cool stuff. But it's enough to say that you know your lymph system's backed up. Your glands are down. I would get on that. Uh, the, it's obvious that the pituitary is down a little bit, mm -hmm. and the, the th parathyroid is obvious. Thyroid, I don't know, but this is an indication that she's not breathing through her skin well. Uh, I drink lemon water throughout the day. I also drink dandelion tea with cinnamon to stabilize my blood sugar level, hypoglycemia since I was a child. Well, that's automatically the adrenals. That's low cortisol levels. And the risk you run now is the body's going to use cholesterol to fight acidosis. And if this has been true since you were a child, you could have occlusions, blockages of the vascular system because you had low corticosteroids. Therefore, the body had no choice but to use LDL directly in fighting acids and that's just what this is suggestive of but the uh, low blood sugar high blood sugar that's type 1 that's hyper hypoglycemia that's always the adrenal glands on top of the kidneys and then of course the kidneys control the lymph and then you're into that whole thing there uh, let's see I do not believe in the disease diagnosis but I need to know how to continue to improve myself and da 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 I'm interested in your classes and tech certification good come on board dear all right, Cheryl. So that'll give you an insight to this case and what you have to do with that. But in, in, in a stroke, you're also not only looking for blockages, you're looking for spasms and things. You're looking for parathyroid. Her scoliosis led you into that uh, field and looking at that. Uh, the excessive bleeding brought you to the pituitary. The so pituitary controls the parathyroid and thyroid. So you know that's, those are down. So you start working on all those. And, you start, and, and the beauty is we do have the tools right now to work on that. So that's good. But 25 years old, big time genetics. Yeah. She's got to back up and redo her genetics a little bit. Oh, this is Scooter. Hi there. Have you addressed autoimmune problems such as vitiligo? Well, uh, uh, welcome aboard, Scooter. Uh, yeah, I can tell you're new to it. I absolutely. I think, uh, Scooter, you if, uh, when it comes to autoimmune, if you throw it in the trash can, you'll be happier because there is no such thing. Uh, when you're looking at vitiligo, you're back to the pituitary again. You want to fix your pituitary. Clean your lymph system out, of course, and everything else, but skin pigmentation is definitely pituitary, my friend. So get up there and work on your pituitary. And are you balding? You know, here's another thing. When you see balding people, and look at all the 20 and 30 year olds. We talked about this yesterday, all yeah. the balding people out there. That's serious. People laugh at me when I say I want to put hair. That guy was going, oh, you can put, oh, no. The reason you don't have hair is acidosis, and that's the same reason for dementia and Alzheimer's. Zymers, not timers. <laughs> uh, Mary, uh, Mary Jo. I like Mary Jo. My aunt, who is 83 years young. Good aunt. <laughs> Just had colon surgery. Uh-oh. Surgery at 83 years old. There was a lady, she was 84, mm -hmm. and she she really could have used a pacemaker, I guess. And she, they didn't know whether to put her under surgery to put a pacemaker in. And uh, something else with her, I forget what it was. And uh, they did, and she died. Mm -hmm. But so at that age, you got to be careful. Mm -hmm. Cutting out a very large tumor. Ooh. Ugh. 12 inches. Holy crap. Well, did you guys see the 200 pound actually being 300 pound by the time he cut it off? Tumor on this guy in Vietnam. It was amazing. This guy's a good surgeon. I, I have, I, I, I'm humbled that this guy surgically. I mean, I love good surgeons. Come on. That should allopathy. Surgery and emergency medicine, but you have to have nature pass in emergency medicine or you're not going to be as good as you could be. you got to realize we have tools. We work with emergencies constantly here. Constantly. Healing crises are emergencies and we have every level you can think of. So, uh, And then post-strokes and things like that. We can save a lot of people in our own ways of doing things with antispasmodics, bleeding forms, all kinds of things to keep them involved in a stroke to stop that 
that stroke. We got so many tools that if you applied that into an emergency room with a few chemicals to, to where we need them, we'd be super, super good. Mm. Uh, cancer is still in six lymph nodes and in her liver. All right. So what she's got the biggest tumor out of there, now she gets focused. Go after why she has the tumors. Always remember the why. All right, there's the kidneys, there's the adrenal glands. They control the gigantic sewer system of, of which this tumor is a part of. And that's the lymphatic system. So get in, she needs to get in her lymph system back. Because remember we talked about the GI tract is just the trunk of the tree. The liver's a branch. So this lymph is not only backed up in her liver, you see that already, colon liver. What about pancreas? Wait a minute, we got a spleen down here. What about Mr. Spleen? So this is why you start to see systemic problems when you see this. Cancer's not moving, and remember, you want cancer cells where? Oh, in lymph nodes. Yeah, yeah, why? Macrophages. Ask yourself why macrophages are not interstitially but are found in lymph nodes. Well, doesn't take a rocket scientist to understand why God didn't put macrophages around the cells interstitially, why they had to be carried specifically to lymph nodes so there isn't a major orgy on chewing on cells. Mm -hmm. That is left to the acids. Mm. So, you clean those lymph nodes out. You know, the reason the lymph nodes can't clean is because she's not filtering, and the reason she's not filtering, of course, is going back to kidneys and adrenals. That's why the tumor in the first place. So once you open that pathway, this fluid problem can flow out, and then it becomes less of a cell problem. And then cells can rebuild themselves, or your immune cells will take them to the lymph nodes, and they'll be broken down. And then that sewage will be removed through the kidneys. Even that sewage can't be removed through the kidneys. And then all these people on antibiotics, who knows? She was my teacher for natural healing for me growing up. Look at that. She is not doing the chemo. I was diagnosed with... St I? Holy crap. I... Look at how many people are loaded with this. I was diagnosed with stage 4 lung cancer two and a half years ago. Was frightened into mild chemo and radiation, but stopped it after what first treatments. No kidding. Six weeks worth, though, and then went to raw food and juicing and much prayer. <laughs> what first steps for my aunt? Same first steps for you, dear. Same first steps for you. You take care of yourself, too. You've got to get into your kidneys and adrenals and get your filtering. <laughs> Remember the P. Remember the P. You want to see sediment in that urine. <laughs> Thanks for the picture, by the way. Uh, it come in real handy. Mm -hmm. But this, this is it. You know, you've got to understand that if you follow this method, look at all the people that are getting well doing this. Even the neurological cases that are walking. I mean, this is, we've seen this for years. And so I really want to get it up there without getting rated, mm -hmm. you know, to show you what you can do because we're not after diseases. I think if you waste your time fighting diseases, you've wasted a lot of valuable time you could have had fun and enjoyed your life with. So, get rid of that illusionary concept and go right into the body and clean it out and rebuild it and you can't you can't you can overcome anything that way virtually if you're too far gone then get ready for the ride because you're going to have a more beautiful journey get off of this uh rock spinning through space don't fear death never fear death no matter what guys learn how to have out of body experiences learn how to travel in the world where you get excited about your next journey I mean, this is exciting because it's greater. It's always grander, depending on your karma. So be careful. That's why you should love people. Have humility because the karma on the other side comes back and kind of whips you like the dragon's tail. It forces you sometimes into humility. <laughs> but, uh, Auntie, you've got to get on her adrenals and kidneys, that's for sure. And, of course, at 83 years old, I'd like to see what a creatinine is. But at 83, most people are losing their kidneys at 83. So getting that going, getting the lymphatic formula, so you can get into the liver and start cleaning that. But the, the lymph system is systemic. The lymph system is backed up everywhere in her body. Uh, getting a little upper circuit brave and nerve at an 83-year-old could give her to keep her marbles for a long time. Start draining her sinuses and cleaning that up, and then her sense of taste, smell, hearing, and uh, cognizance and, uh, and 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 ability to handle herself will go way up. So you got to go that. This is price for you, so huh? shorten it when you can. This is price for you. 
A surprise? <laughs> is it a good surprise or is it a bad? You know, fighting all these people, you never know whether it's a good surprise or a bad surprise, you know. I, you never know. The water full of love. I haven't talked to you in a long time, my friend. I have yet to see Dr. Morris credit Dan for all the support. Porters, Dan has referred to Dr. Morris. What's wrong with you, man? Uh, I think Dr. Morris is a kind-hearted man, very knowledgeable, and he's a hero of mine for speaking out against the corruption of the promising industry, but Dr. Morris has closed his mind to growth and new truths from what I can see, and he does not seem to give credit to Dan for Dan's contributions, nor does Dr. Morris live what he preaches. Well, water full of love. Too bad. Too bad you have that kind of thinking, son. Uh, that just shows where your head is. You know what? You have no idea. And this is, people say stuff like this, and they have no idea. Dan's been a personal friend for years of mine. What are you talking about? You know, you have no clue. And to make statements like this, you have no clue. And to, to say that I'm close-minded and I don't look for new truths and everything else, be careful about getting out of balance with that. Water full of love is out of balance here, and you got to be careful with that. You know, to make statements like that, you know, that's insulting, water full of love. And uh, I'd change that love on the back of that because uh, obviously you're blind to the truth because uh, I love Dan. Dan's been a good friend of mine for a long time. I don't mind people talking about my past and where I've been. I don't mind that. And uh, let's see what you're like in 40 years from now. And with that kind of attitude, it might not be in a good place. So go get your head together, man. Uh, this is for a different site. And this is Garrett. Oh, for crap's sake. Cats, seriously? Let's fix humans, yeah? Who gives a damn about cats? Oh, Garrett. Oh, man, you mean this little fella? That little fella? Well, the owner of that cat would probably disagree with you. Well, that's that's sad, that poor little cat. Uh, look at that poor leg on that cat. See that leg? That's horrible. Well, Garrett, let's fix everybody up. Let's fix the animals, let's fix man. Why can't we fix everybody up, Garrett? We can, you know? And uh, this is from Kissimmee, Florida. The information they started using and working on this cat. Uh, cat's getting better and uh, she's doing good. So, I mean, what's up? We're here to help everyone. Love everyone, guys. Love everyone. I don't know what this uh, Dan McDonald thing is. That's from the past, though, here in the last uh, few weeks. And it's like, what? I mean, I was amazed when I came in and said, it's like, well, what are you talking about? Dan was just so at my uh, school, what, last year, talking about that. You know, and the fact about balance, and then you need to bring yourself into balance, and that's what we teach here is balance. So if you don't like that, I don't, I don't know what to say. You go play somewhere else in some other field of dreams if you want. This is Jane Steele, a general cleanse package. I have peripheral neuropathy. Okay, so we want to get that limb system moving because that's what what's happening here is the acids are breaking down your nervous system. Uh, I would do some reflexology, both hands and feet, just to move these acids around. Uh, you can do those foot baths uh, to help that, but again, get on brain and nerve number two, uh, get in your upper circulation formulas just to get up in the head a little bit, but then start working on that limb system, getting those kidneys filtering, getting the adrenals up, that get neurotransmitters up, that'll strengthen the myelin sheaths, and then everything will be strengthened up and good. And uh, but you want to work with that and get yourself out of that neuropathy. Now, listen, he is ringing in his ears, so he's got a lot of pressure here. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's that limp system again in the kidneys. Anxiety. So right there is the his uh, adrenal glands right there. And a smoker for 30 years. He lives in B.C., up in your neck of the woods, Canada. Mm -hmm. What might be a uh, cost to get started? Uh, call in here. Very exciting. Want me to come in? <laughs> All right, all right, all right, all right. Okay. <laughs> they want me to come in there, so I'm going to close here and... So we can get this. I don't want to make too long of a video. Your videos are spiritual, spirituality. So thank you so much. I'm going to do more, Greg, more videos on spirituality and things. Uh, this world is really lack of a need of that. There's so many people with judgments and everything else. And it's like, let's just love everyone and help everyone. And let's just forget, let's enjoy our differences and uh, just give love to everyone. If you want to experience the God state, then you have to be, you can't be judgmental. The same thing with you, Waterfall of Love. If you want to experience the God state, then you're making a judgment call here where you, have not, you, you don't understand what's going on. So sorry that you had to, had to come to that, you know. But that's what I mean is uh, we need to throw these kind of uh, opinions and these things into the trash can. Uh, none of us here think uh, less of Dan in any way. Matter of fact, uh, you know, Dan has a system of getting paid for that. So, you know, I mean, everybody's getting paid for helping and everybody's doing everything they can. 
So, uh, I mean, Dan's one of millions of people that are out there helping everybody, and I don't know what to say. Say that I love you all, and that uh, I hope your journey today is fun, and that uh, you open your heart to remember humility. Always work on humility. Give love to all things, but also don't, don't give away yourself. Don't, don't mistake humility for giving yourself away. Humility is where you understand that all things are of God and that you recognize that and you give proper credence to all life, even the kitty cats. All right, bye-bye and have a fun day. Bye-bye.